Hey everyone, my name is Amanda and I am a neurodivergent woman. I have autism, ADHD, aphantasia, and a rare memory disorder called SDAM. So I thought today, on my birthday, that it would be a good day to do a question and answer period. So I looked up 10 questions that people will often ask autistic person and I would give you my spin. One thing is I this I am one autistic person <laughs> with one voice. And so this my answers are not going to be applicable to everybody. And I am not a medical channel. This is just my experience, my lived experience. So a little background. I am actually 43 years old today. <laughs> and I just got diagnosed a couple months ago. So I am on my diagnosis journey and learning how to unmask as an autistic person. And so I have some more videos about unmasking right here because um, when you get a late diagnosis, there is a very large, no, that's not the right word. There is a process of unmasking that happens where you have to try to figure out what it means that it, it is to be autistic and what that means for you. And I go into it in those videos. <laughs> Let's get to the questions because I know that I can talk a long time and I don't want this video to get too long. <laughs> Number one, why is it hard for people with autism to communicate? So I actually have always considered myself to be an extrovert, but communication is something that I have struggled with my whole life. I've also with ADHD, I tend to go on tangents a lot, which for other people who don't have ADHD, it's hard for them to keep track of all my tangent conversations. And I oftentimes will think that I'm being extra clear and still people will not understand me. So I don't know why it's hard for people with autism to communicate, but I will verify that it is definitely something that I've struggled with and I have gone to seminars on communication. I have read books about communication. I feel like I'm communicating with words very well, but oftentimes I don't. Another thing with that is my processing speed. A lot of times I process slower than I think. So sometimes somebody will ask me a question and so many answers or possibilities or tangents fill my head that it literally is like a funnel, all this information that needs to get to my tongue and it gets blocked, it gets road, road jammed and I can't get the right words out. And sometimes one will slip through and it really shouldn't have been the right answer. <laughs> the, like I don't have time to think about what I want to say and the wrong phrase will pop out of that funnel log gym. So I think that also leads to communication. It's not that I'm not smart. I actually have a very high IQ, but my processing speed is slow. It takes me a long time to get the right words. Number two, why is irony or sarcasm hard for me? So again, not all autistic people struggle with irony or sarcasm. A lot of us actually like to use sarcasm. When we're using it, we understand it more. But a lot of times when someone else is using sarcasm, we won't get it, especially written sarcasm. A lot of our autistic people, and myself included, like to be very literal. And sarcasm and irony don't lie, rely on being literal. And so when someone's sarcastic, we will take them at their literal word. And that is not very effective because they didn't mean it literally. Number three, why is eye contact so hard? I don't know. This one's fascinating for me. So as an undiagnosed autistic person, I didn't know that I struggled with eye contact. I wasn't even aware of it because I wasn't one of those people who had people tell me to look at them in the eyes. I think I masked very well. I used to look at people in the mouth a lot. And I still do. But um, I would look at their mouths when they were talking. Or I would look, you know, not at their eyes, but just around them. And I knew that I did this, but I didn't really think of it as not having eye contact with people because I will have eye contact with people um, for short periods of time. And autistic people 
some autistic people struggle with eye contact. Again, it's a spectrum. So they might not be able to do it at all. And then other people can mask very well and do it, or maybe they're not uncomfortable with it. I don't know. And for me, I will, if I'm trying to think, I will often look up and talk like this where I'm not looking at the person because that actually helps my words flow. If I'm not, see, not even looking at myself in the camera, I can talk faster. But as soon as I'm looking at myself or looking at the camera right there, sometimes my words will slow down because now I'm trying to have to concentrate on making sure my eyes are in the right place. So my brain actually has to take that into consideration and it slows down. If I get talking about a, a subject that I'm really passionate about and, and it's a real person and not a camera, I will make over, I will overcompensate and just like drill in and have super eye contact. Okay, we're only at number three, so I can get going. Number four, can you read facial expressions? <sighs> yes and no. This is again a spectrum thing. Some people struggle with it more than other people. I thought I was always pretty good at it, but then it goes back to number one with communication problems. So I think sometimes I would misread people's expressions. I know that when I'm chatting and I want to use an emoji, I <laughs> will make the face that I want. It sounds like, oh, sad. So I'll make this like a over exaggerated sad face and then I will search for that emoji or like I will like sorry there's a hair so that's another question coming up um <laughs> but like oh I want to have a shock face okay that's what that emoji looks like I actually have to make the face even though with my aphantasia I can't visualize it I still make that face and then I know what emoji to use uh number five <laughs> do you ever offend anyone uh probably Probably yes. I've had a, so many friends, like way more than normal friends, uh, ghost me in my life. People who I thought were friends. So I'm guessing maybe I offended them somehow and then they just didn't communicate that with me. And I'm sure there's been other people that I've offended because I can be more blunt than I intend, especially online, because my brain might be thinking two or five things at once. And if I'm replying back to somebody, um, I might reply and not take care in the words to like soften in something. I might just like put the facts out and it comes across as blunt, blunt which then could send somebody. Number six, do you ever get sensory overload? Yes, like I, one single hair is driving me crazy. And with curly hair, it falls off and will get on my arm, drive me crazy. Um, bright lights, too many sounds, um, intense smells, all of these senses can really overstimulate me, which leads to number seven, what does sensory overload feel like? So depends on the situation, but a lot of times when I'm getting sensory overload, um, like earlier the dogs were barking and I literally just had to put my hands on my ears because I just like, uh, want to tune it out. I, it's basically, um, a dissociation that wants to happen. Like I just want to be out of that situation and it's like I, my brain will almost start to shut down. Um, some autistic people will flee, run away when they're overstimulated. Some shut down, get small, get quiet, have a harder time communicating, when they have sensory overload, I know that is typically what I will do. It gets harder and harder to communicate when my senses are being bombarded from all sides. Number eight, do you like to stick to routine? Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, this is another one that before I got diagnosed, I did not realize this about myself because my days are kind of fluid as a stay-at-home mom. Like I have more control over my schedule. But that means that I was able to create a routine that suited me and I didn't realize that I had created it. And so when something gets off of that routine, I would get really upset and not really understand why. And it could be something small, like um, my husband and I like to watch a TV show before bed every night. And if one night he's like, hey, I'm not really in the mood for a TV show tonight, let's just read our books in bed together. No, we watch TV. Then we read our books. What are you doing? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that would upset me. And of course, I intellectually knew that that was silly. Like, we don't have to watch a TV show every single night. And maybe he wasn't in the mood for a show. And I could, I'm flexible enough as an autistic person, like, I have enough flexibility that I can roll with it, but there is an upset that happens. It's not like, okay, yeah, sure. Let's do that. There's, like, ah, ah, and then I have to like, okay, this is what we're doing tonight. And I can go with it. But um, changes in routine definitely bother me. <laughs> Number nine, do you like having autism? So um, this question is really interesting for me to think about because I'm newly diagnosed. I'm only a couple months in. So I only realized I was autistic with ADHD like two months ago. So I haven't really had that much time to process it. So when I first got my diagnosis, I was ecstatic because it's like, oh my gosh, my life makes sense. These are all the things that I have struggled so hard with and did not even know and some of the things that I struggled with like the routine I wasn't even aware of the upset that it caused like I knew I was upset but I didn't understand why or where it came from or you know that kind of thing so but then also with getting a diagnosis just like any you know group of people there is a community built in so I am had the opportunity to start to get to know other autistic people online and that there's just a connection that's shared between any groups of people that share some kind of commonality, if that makes sense. Um, and I've always, my entire life, even though I've had friends, I've never felt well, I won't say never because, you know, with my husband, I have and there are certain friends, but like most of the time, I don't have a really strong connection. I've always felt like something was missing. I've always felt like the outside person looking in. I've always in a group of people felt lonely. I've always, in a way, even felt invisible. And having an autism diagnosis, I feel seen for the first time in my life. So yes, I do, but it's hard. There's a lot of struggles. Um, being autistic in a neurotypical world is not easy, but the more people who watch videos like this and understand that we are people, we're normal, we're just different. It's different. That's all, we just have a different communication style. Okay, but that leads into number 10. What do you want to say about people with autism? first thing that any person with autism will tell you is if you've met one person with autism, you have met one person with autism. You cannot, and I implore you, do not compare one person with autism with another person with autism. Do not go up to somebody who says they have autism and say, you can't have autism. My best friend's son has autism and you aren't anything like him. Autism is a huge spectrum of traits and we all present differently and uniquely just like any two neurotypical people are very 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 different you would not compare two neurotypical people and say oh well you can't be neurotypical because i know someone who's neurotypical it's just autism is the way our brain is formed and within that we are very unique individuals i have identical twins they both have been diagnosed with autism I'm diagnosed with autism. All three of us have very different presentations of autism in this one family. So the thing that I would like to say to people about autism is keep learning. I'm learning. I'm learning so much more than I knew three or four months ago. Every day I'm learning more and more about what it means to be autism, autistic on a spectrum of people because I'm very interested in learning about it for myself but also to understand other people with autism. So yeah, that is my video of 10 questions you want to ask an autistic person. I hope you found it interesting. Please comment down below if you relate, if you have any other questions. I love chatting with you. So until the next one, guys, bye.